unacceptable. And their Brazilian coach, Jovan Vieira, was sacked and replaced with the Tunisian Nabil Malou. The problem is the 52-year-old has had just one match, a one-all draw against Iraq in December to prepare his team for this competition. Another warm-up match against the United Arab Emirates scheduled for last week was abandoned because of a dispute over a video recording. Don't have any more information than that as to the reason why. Fabulous atmosphere inside the Melbourne Rectangular Stadium. Just over 30,000, the capacity of this ground that hosts many sports as well as pop concerts. The Rugby League World Cup will have its place here as well in two years' time. Two teams are out. Australia in the traditional gold shirts, green shorts, Q8 in the blue shirts. And the dignitaries being presented to the two side, that is Mesaid Alenzi, the captain of Q8. In many ways, no pressure on Q8 this year. The expectation levels are, are much lower than in previous competitions. Winners in 1980, semi-finalists in 84 and 96, runners-up back in 1976 as well. The quarter-finals of 2000, though, the last time they made it through the group stages. And back in 2007, in Australia's first ever appearance in the Asian Cup, Q8 failed to qualify. Tense, tense moments, these, Stuart, for the players. Yeah, they just want to get on with the game. The crowd are desperate for the game to get going as well. There's a great atmosphere inside the ground. Players very tense in this opening fixture. But they've got some experience in the side. Have Australia. Cahill, he said, will lead the line. Yerinak, the holding midfield player. Sparanovic, the centre-half. Some key players. And watch out for Matthew Leckie, who I thought was excellent at the World Cup. Can play on the right-hand side or the left, but he's a good runner with the ball. And he's a good crosser of the ball as well. Ladies and gentlemen, a long way for the two sides. Now it is time for the anthems. for Australia. It may not be the main sport in this country, but the Australian FA see this as a wonderful 
opportunity to really heighten the profile of what is the world game here in Australia. And what better way to do it than for the Socceroos to lift the Asian Cup for the very first time. They're certainly seen as one of the main rivals to the red-hot favourites, Japan. And another nation eager to prove themselves this time around will be the South Koreans, who, despite qualifying for all those World Cups, haven't been Asian champions since 1960. So here's the Australian 11 then charged with kicking off the campaign. Tim Cahill is likely to be featuring in his last major tournament. Mile Jedinak has been in superb form for Crystal Palace this season, will hold the midfield together. Massimo Luongo and Trent Sainsbury represent the new generation. They've won just nine caps between them. paper it should be straightforward for Australia the extra pressure of being the host nation and the high expectation levels here may just well give an opening to Kuwait who have actually beaten Australia four times in their last six meetings top draw referee for this one Rashran Ermatov of Uzbekistan the 37 year old took charge of the 2011 Asian Cup final between Australia and Japan, he's refereed at two World Cups and actually holds the record for officiating the most World Cup matches, nine in all after the 2014 World Cup. is five times the Asian referee of the year. Well, here's the Kuwaiti starting 11. And a couple of surprises, surprise omissions in their Starting 11 here, Hamid Youssef with 10 caps is preferred to Nawaf al Khaldi, who's won 105 in goal for Q8. Star striker Bada al Mutawa is just three shy of 50 international goals, but he is amongst the Q80 substitutes. The entire Q80 squad play their club football in the Middle East. Only Hussein and Alenzi of the starting 11 play their football outside of Q8. Well, there is the Q80 bench. Don't be at all surprised to see the introduction of Al Mutawa at some point. <laughs> so the opening match of the 2015 Asian Cup, the quest to find Asia's champions for the next four years. Japan have handed the trophy back to the AFC and it will be the runners-up from four years ago and the host nation this time around, Australia, to kick off this competition against the 1980 Asian champions, Q8. When boys, to take you through the action, Stuart Robson is alongside me. Stuart, Q8 have nothing to lose, do they? No, they don't. They've put out a very defensive lineup. They're going to try and play on the counter attack, you'd imagine. As you quite rightly say, they've got nothing to lose with a new manager. They've just got to put in a good performance. And it is Australia in the golden green who kick off the 2015 Asian Cup. It's the moment they've been waiting for since switching from Oceania across to the AFC to improve the overall quality of the national team, gaining more competitive matches. It's certainly done that. But their main goal, or one of the main goals, is to lift this trophy. They never failed to go beyond the group stages in their two previous appearances for the finals and then runners-up four years ago. Here's Cruz. Luongo. Back in possession, though, with Aziz. And not for long, he's immediately pressurised by Luongo, and it's a free kick to Q8. Yeah, Aziz is going to be the lone striker. Faisal is going to be playing out on the left-hand side. It's a five-man midfield for Q8. Very much on the defensive right from the start of the game. There's the midfield player, Luongo, for Australia. Katani. Overheading that, though, towards... Faisal. Throw 
for Q8. Hitch getting the foot in, though. Australia will be looking to start well. It's a tough group, remember. South Korea, the main rivals for Australia, you feel, for top spot in the group. There will be the two sides expected to qualify, but don't write off Oman. They're a decent outfit. And on their day in the past, Q8 have proved problematic for Australia. Left back trying to get forward. The hitch. They will play that big diagonal. Sainsbury, the right-sided centre-half, likes to hit that big diagonal out to the left-hand side. He's challenging for the ball. Australia have it back, though. Never met in the Asian Cup finals. They've met four times in the qualifying tournament, though. Q8 coming out on top with two wins. One win for Australia and one draw. Four wins in their last six meetings for Q8 against Australia. Q8 are a team in pretty much disarray coming into this competition. Barely any chance at all for their coach Nabil Malou to work with the side. Here's Franjic. Manji, lack of preparation. Did Denmark no harm at all, did it, in the European Championships of 1992? Here's Franjic. Sainsbury. Touch off by Troisi. Spiranovic. Every Q80 player behind the ball. Chance here, maybe, to get the ball into the centre. Header behind for a corner. There hitch it was, getting forward, looking to whip the cross in. Yeah, Cahill had just made a run away from the goal. Going back towards the penalty spot, he wanted the ball cut back, and that's where he's so dangerous, in the air. Tim Cahill, he finds space, good header of the ball. Zonal marking from Kuwait. Corner taken short to Cruz. Troisi. To the danger zone again, the head on by Jedinak. It was well worked by Australia to get the cross in. Trying to suck your way out. Aziz. There, Aziz to win possession of the ball, but they don't keep it for long, Q8. Here's Behic, now Jedinak. Lecky. Play with one from Troisi. When Q8 pick up possession of the ball, the, the head goes up and there's nobody in blue ahead of the man in possession. Here's Al Qatani. Strong challenge by Sainsbury. Back though by Al Hajri. Al Hajri, the right back. Doing well, just intercepting the ball as it was played into Cahill. Spiranovic. They have set themselves up to prevent that electric bombardment that may have expected from Australia as the host nation looking for that early goal just to settle any nerves there might be. They keep beaten to that though by Faisal. Yeah, Faisal was playing on the left-hand side of midfield. It's going to double up with the fullback against Leckie. Foul that time on Sultan. Yeah, Franich the play going in. Well, they were known several years ago, Australia, for being a very physical side. Not quite the same height in their team or physicality about them. Play much better football. It's out of play for Al Qatani. Sultan. 
touch in there again by Sultan, but getting that wins it back for Australia. But they are to do well, Australia. You feel that they need yet an act to put in the kind of performances he has done for Crystal Palace so far this season in the Premier League. Sultan. Al Katani. Katani again. Seems plenty of it on this near side early on. That's a neat touch back from Sultan to Al Katani. Couldn't pick out a teammate though, and it's deflected behind off Sainsbury, but that's the best we've seen so far from Q8. Yeah, good play from Al Katani and Faisal down this left hand side. There's the ball. Back heel. Longo doesn't go with his runner. Franic is screaming at him there. But there wasn't too much on when he got into that position. So he's with the corner. It's a low delivery. He's come through a Q8 lead. Well, can you believe this? A sucker punch from a corner, and it's Hussein who has put the side from the Middle East ahead here against Australia. Well, they weren't banking on that, the Socceroos and their supporters. And delight for the small band of Q80 supporters. Hussein's header, it's Australia nil, Q81, and Stuart, this wasn't in the script. Well, the player in the near post zone should deal with it, but he doesn't do so. Then Cahill was marking on the wrong side. Cahill was actually in the space trying to defend it. He looked around, there's poor marking in there, but what a brave header it was from Hussein. Gets there first, ducks his head, Cahill goes with his foot. A really good finish. Look, when he first took the corners out, it was a poor one from Aziz. Misunderstanding between Cahill and Bihic. And that certainly silenced the crowd here. Third international goal for Hussein Fadal. So just the one in the qualifiers and a 2-1 win away to Thailand. What a start for Q8, just eight minutes gone. And Australia find themselves behind. Here's Sainsbury. What that does, of course, is set up Q8 absolutely perfectly to continue the way they set out. Now with a one-goal lead to defend is Al Qatani. Charging forwards. Good bit of pace, Yedinak nudging him over. And the ball back with Matt Ryan. His first touch of the ball, the Australian goalkeeper, was actually to take it out of the back of his goal. Did he get a slight touch with his right hand on the goal? But it was very, very neatly done by the centre-half, Hussein. Franjic. Australian FA were talking about the, the need to get off to a good start to really ignite the imagination of the locals. It's a long way to go, but I imagine the start hasn't gone down too well. Spiranovic. Great, by the way, one of 11 teams in the Asian Cup this year who've appointed a new coach in the last year. There's been too much stability in coaching circles for the 16 qualified nations. Troisi. Sainsbury. Luongo. To hit back as quickly as possible, Australia. That was a sliding challenge from Al Katani, who has drawn a free kick. Yeah, the left backs had a good start to the game. This wasn't one of his better moments. Just went over the top of the ball in the end. Luongo.
This is where Cahill, Yedinak, Spiranovic will be a real threat in the air. NQ, Kuwait, zonal market. What they try and do at times, Australia, they try and shield Cahill. He gets in a little posse of players and then tries to make his run from that position so he can't be picked up. Rented in by Luongo. In the end, that's an easy gather for Hamid in the QAT goal from Speranovic's header. Set piece is normally a strong point for Australia, attacking wise and defensively, which was. All the more surprising that Hussein was able to sneak in with that header to give Kuwait the surprise lead. Behic. Okay, he was the closest player to the centre half, but he wasn't actually marking. He was in the middle of the goal, ready to attack every ball that came in. He wasn't one of the man markers. And problems for Postikoglu. October of 2013 to replace Olga Roziek, which who led Brisbane Raw to two A-League titles. He's actually born in Greece, but won four caps for Australia as a player. To throw for Q8. Postacoglu nearly pulled off a, a great victory. He was in the stadium at Porto Alegre. When they were 1 0 up and 2 1 up against the Dutch, they could have gone 3 1 up. Ultimately, lost all three games, though, to the Netherlands, Chile, and Spain to exit at the group stage of the World Cup for the second time in succession. Since the 2006 switch to Asia, they've qualified for three successive World Cups. To that, they'd only played in 1974. It has certainly worked for them. It's Al Katani. A good start to the game, the left back, and again, Al Katani looking dangerous. Taken away though, and the shots in the end is gathered by Ryan. Lucky winning the ball initially. Al Maxid, who just came in, trying to get his shot away. These are the diminutive players. Starting out on the right-hand side, he's a left-footer. Lecky. Oh, Katani. And the pressure from Lecky. Longo trying to win it back for Australia and does. Now Lecky with the chance to cross. Gets the cross in. Cahill with the header. And cleared away by Al Maxides. Tell you what, they're, they're getting through some work early on the Q80 players. They certainly are. Good cross from Lecky to the far post. Cahill jumping early. The referee's going to take no nonsense here. He is a good referee, an experienced one. One or two of the Q80 players were moaning that Cahill jumped too early and was on the shoulders of the defenders. He got away with that. Here it is again. He just jumps early, it's a good header from him. Just trying to hit it back into the dangerous area. 35 now, playing his trade at New York Red Bulls in the MLS, the former Millwall and Everton player. 36 goals in 76 internationals, it's a proud record that he holds. Playing in his fourth Asian Cup now, he's played in three World Cups, but this is likely to be his ninth and last major international tournaments. Now he will be missed. It's Behic. Headed towards Cahill, but cleared away by Alenzi. Spiranovic. This is Jedinak. Katani with the header away. Challenge by Hussein, the goal scorer. Header out by Spiranovic. It's going to be very difficult for Postacoglu's men 
to break through the middle of this Q8 side. And very narrow, got a lot of players in there. He's going to find a way to break them down now. by Lecky. The turn back from Cruz. Another unorthodox challenge by Elenzi, but did the job nonetheless. Just needed to lift the ball over the foot of Elenzi, who had made his mind up that he was going to slide in. There's the danger of Lecky down the right-hand side. It's very quickly taken. Already Australia showing a bit of urgency. Franic with it. Yedinak. Plenty of time for the host nation to pull this around. Sainsbury. Spiranovic. Q8 backing off. Look how many blue shirts are between the ball and the Q80 penalty area. Wonder how sustainable that is for the, the full 90 minutes. They have a game plan and they're sticking to it, but here's a chance maybe now. And the foul right on the edge of the box on Robbie Cruz. Draws a yellow card. I think a number of this crowd thought that the trip had taken place just inside the area, but I think the referee's got it right. Yeah, good little run from Cruz. Just sweeps the ball with his left foot past the lunging tackle of Hussein. He's still moaning. Ebrahim. Ibrahim went to the ball, the ball was played past him. It meant Hussein had to come out, and he didn't make a very good job of it there. Lovely start for Hussein, the opening goal, and then comes the first player booked in the tournament as well. Uh, who plays in the United Arab Emirates for Al Wada. And this is a glorious chance for Australia. The target for Q8, of course, will be to hold on to this lead until at least half-time, they can get a bit of respite. Is any surprise to how the pattern of the game has gone in the opening 19 minutes, apart from the fact that Q8 have scored. Troisi and Yedinak over this. Okay, he'll making a, a nuisance of himself in the Q80 wall. So he's giving him a, a little shovel too. Troisi. No, I think it's got to be Yedinak from here. Okay, here we'll just move out the way at the last minute, trying to block the goalkeeper's line of vision. Five goals this season. Crystal Palace. Troisi leaves it. It is Yedinak off the wall and over the. That's a corner. Didn't quite get the height on it here. He turns his head on it. A batch of Q80 supporters behind that goal celebrated it. Well, they did the Q8 goal. Here comes the latest corner. Q8 defending well so far, though. Franjic with the cross in. Got another 70 minutes or so of this guy to pressure. Now Cruz. To see a blue shirts in there though. Q8 clear their lines again. Now Aziz, a chance to run and relieve the pressure, and he's won a free kick. Foul by Franic. I'm surprised if Franic doesn't get a book in here. Seemed a fairly cynical trip. Referee's not going to book him on this occasion. He's going to have to lead that line very well, Aziz. Katani <laughs> over this free kick. Instead, Franic. Spiranovic. For all their possession, they've not really troubled Hamid yet in the Q8 goal, Australia. 
Behic. Al Ebrahim. Alenzi. Well under pressure, here's Al Katani. Australia beginning to up the work rate when Kuwait have possession. Here's Faisal. Strong challenge by Franjic. Equally determined from El Ebrahim. Yeah, that's what he's in the side to do. El Ebrahim, the holding midfield player. He's trying to protect his two centre halves. When the ball goes out wide, he goes and joins his fullbacks as well, just to try and double up. Certainly has worked hard in this first 20 odd minutes. Sainsbury. No Yedinak. Cahill, the obvious target. Well claimed by Hamid. Cahill found he was being shoved there by Hussein. And yeah, the referee will keep an eye on that. There's the diagonal ball. Cahill trying to get in between the fullback and the centre half. Hussein just gives him a nudge, makes it easy for Hamid Youssef. Has to be careful, Hussein. He's scored the first goal of the tournament, picked up the first yellow card of the tournament. Certainly doesn't want to pick up the first red card of the competition. The hitch with the throw. Would you have expected more from Australia in the opening? 25 minutes. I expect more crosses to come into the box. They've got lots of possession. It's easy for them to have to possession in these sort of areas. It's what they do to try and find space in the attacking third. Here comes the big diagonal. It's quite played by Yedinak. Nice turn by Lecky. Got a good challenge though by Hussein. They're becoming the central figure of this match. It's a corner to Australia. So Kay Cahill and Spiranovic and Yedinek don't need to get in a little cluster here. They're up against man markers. Not of aerial power though from this Australian team. Yedinek winning the header. Hussein with the header away. It's a goal kick. Final touch off Yedinek. Bahrain didn't exactly set the, the world alight in terms of their qualification. They finished second in their group, some seven points behind Iran. Lebanon and Thailand were the other teams in that group, and Bahrain's uh, Kuwait's only two wins came against the bottom of the table, Thailand. Sainsbury with the touchback to Ryan. Spiranovic. The form hasn't exactly been top draw from Q8. Qualified just a point ahead of Lebanon in the end. Franic. Now Yedinak. Got to switch the play quickly here. Lecky. Still going Lecky, oh, it was a risky challenge from Al Hajri. Got away with it though. Oh, good little turn by Lecky. So good at running with the ball. When the ball gets played to him, he just tries to nutmeg the defender. There it is. Al Hajri gets back and gets a good tackle in. Referee right on the spot, good referee in. Another Australian corner, though. Header away by al -Katani. And the first time shot, off target from Luongo. Yeah. Struck it well, always going wide. Player on the edge of the box to keep it back in play, keep the pressure on. The one goal in 16 appearances for Swindon this season, Luongo. In his first major tournament, just five caps ahead of tonight. Most of Kuwait's good work has come on this near side. 
with Al Katani and Faisal. Katani with the throw now. Something good news for Swindon Town. The uh, Asian Cup Luongo's central midfield partner Yasser Kazim has been called up by Iraq. So Swindon have had the part ripped out of their team for the next month. Hajri's header. Sainsbury. Franjic. Cruz. Challenge again from Al Katani. They're trying to make those little runs from inside to out to get down the side of Kuwait. Aziz. Australian throw. Rather easily there, the Cruz. Now Max Seeds. Now Hajri back to Hussein, the goal scorer. Hamid. Too high though. Another Australian throw. Now Australia switch play quickly. Abraham again in that midfield, Aziz with the touch. Next challenge wins it back for Australia. Now Hadri has gone down for Q8. This is Cahill though, who's playing on. Ben Hitcher made a stopping run forwards. Cahill didn't find him and meanwhile, Al Hadri is still down. Yeah, Australia had every right to carry on. There's been some tough tackling from Kuwait, sliding in. Takes a whack himself there, Al Hajri. Let's see what happens here. What a great deal. I think the crowd think he'll be fine. <laughs> they do, don't they? Not too much sympathy. They do have the toughest start of any of the 16 nations at the Asian Cup Q8, taking on the host nation here. And then next up in Canberra, they face South Korea in what will be a repeat of the 1980 final. South Korea, as I said earlier, desperate to get their hands on this Asian Cup trophy. First two editions of it and then never been champions since, which is something of an anomaly given how dominant they are in the region in terms of World Cup qualification. Have to sit back and watch as Japan have dominated the event. Here's Behic. That is a really tough start, and then it is Oman in the final group match as it was in the Gulf Cup. Well, that's the strange thing, isn't it, about Japan? Do well at international level, but at club level. They don't do particularly well in the Asian Champions League. Whereas the Korean clubs do. Yeah, it is a strange one. Is Luongo. Winning every challenge at the moment, Q8. Sultan timing that one to perfection. Well, the tactics are working for Malul at the moment. Making Australia play in front of... His side, getting everybody behind the ball, frustrating them. To make matters better, they scored that early goal as well. Sainsbury. Touch off from Leckie. Now Cruz is in there. Big appeals every time a player goes down, here's a chance. But the flag is up against Cruz. 
But every time there's a challenge in that Q80 penalty area, there's roars from the spectators trying to force the referee into a decision. Clearly offside, Cruz. Seven appearances this season for Bayer Leverkusen in the Bundesliga. He's struggled for regular games since the move from Dusseldorf in 2013. He's a good player for Dusseldorf. Hasn't quite had the same impact at Bayer Leverkusen. Slight step up. Used to play here for Melbourne Victory before a move to Brisbane, Robbie Cruz. Part of that Australian squad that reached the final four years ago in Doha. Lecky. Long challenge again from Al Katani. Started the tournament really brightly, the left back. Turn away from Luongo. It's a great ball, and it's an equaliser from Tim Cahill. Great work from Massimo Luongo. And Cahill really couldn't miss. He is up and running at the 2015 Asian Cup, and so are Australia. 1-1. One, one. Well, that was much better from Australia. They did things quickly off the throw-in. Gets a bit of luck to start with, with the bounce, but then does really well just to wriggle away from a couple of challenges. But even better, he sees the bus. We talked about Tim Cahill working for space in the box. He takes the defenders in to start with, just takes a step back, finds the space, and a good finish. But made by that man there, Luongo. Clever play down the right-hand side, but also good movement from Cahill in the box. Aziz. Oh, they couldn't get to half-time. Q8. And Australia. Looking to have a lead themselves by the break. Now Hazri, free kick Australia. No, I think he got that one wrong. The referee completely. Al Hadri's going for the ball. And the Australian player was leaning into him. Here is again, that's a perfect tackle. What you don't see is the angle that. Cruz is making no attempt to go for the ball. He's actually leaning into the player. More danger then for Q8. Well, this time they're not marking zonally. They are trying to hold a high line. There's a lot of space. That's better position. Could go another two or three yards back, I believe. Ball's going to be bent in behind them. Going to be running back towards their own goal, the Q80 players. Gold shirts in there. Australia hit Q8 with a double whammy here. The delivery like that. Saying getting the initial header. Here's Faisal. No idea what Teresi was looking for there. Space was in behind the defenders. Made it the wrong side of them. By Lecky, who was being challenged by Al Hajri. Twice now, Al Hajri has put in risky challenges, to say the least, in the penalty area. Oh, caught in possession now, Sultan. Lecky again charging through. Alenzi with the challenge that time, but Australia keep up the pressure here with Luongo, who's gone down looking for it. And I think it was rather fortunate the referee didn't produce a yellow for that. The referee's in excellent position. Here he is, and he falls over. Yeah, and Lecky then throws himself to the ground. The referee's right on that occasion. Is he right here as well? Oh, the foot does come out. It's a risky challenge. Well, he's certainly got more of a case from that angle. Aziz. Against Sainsbury. Such a partisan crowd, isn't it, here for Australia? Everything is against Q8. Long range efforts from Al Hazri. Another wild attempt off target. 
Yeah, I'm not sure he's the most popular person in the ground. Al Hajari. Sainsbury. Franic. Troisi. Hazri to Aziz. Salem. Hussein. Hajri. Al Ibrahim. It's left short and Lecky looking to break through, but Al Katani covers. They're quick to try and win the ball back, Australia. Once they lose it, they try and win it back quickly. Behic. Sainsbury. Yes. Need from Australia. Franic with the cross in, but Hajri with the header away. Spiranovic. Go challenge by Al Katani. Can't hold on to it at the moment, though. Q8. Now this is Franic with the ball in. It was behind Cruz, though. Well, he will get forward, Franic. If Lecky goes infield, support Cahill. Franic loves to get forward down the right-hand side and get crosses in. That's the tail of the game so far. Great start from Kuwait. Australia has been dominant in possession. Haven't created too many opportunities, but the one they have created was well taken by Cahill. After a good play by Luongo. Alenzi. Hajri, stick from the crowd because of that injury that they seem to think that he feigned earlier on. I think it's fair to say the Australian crowds aren't known for their generosity towards the opposition, as many an English test side cr at cricket will tell you, or the rugby team. Desperate for Australia to go all the way in this competition. The test will most definitely lie ahead. Tracy. Now Hajri. Maxit. Sainsbury. Ian Spiranovic have had so much of the ball unchallenged. Now Franic. Poor touch from Lecky though. Fortunate to win it back off Al Katani. Now Franic. Sainsbury. There's no pressure on the ball whatsoever for Australia when they have the ball inside their own half. Two eight more than happy to sit and retreat. So easy. Yeah, trade the one two to start with. Got in behind the defender, and the ball came back to him again. Now, can they get a better delivery this time? Again, zonal marking from Kuwait. Good run at it from the Australian players. And it goes. Yedinak jumping. It's a, a free kick for Kuwait. Yedinak with the foul on this occasion. Lindsay is down, the Kuwaiti captain. Yeah, good battle between those two players. He does get his head on it. But he actually falls on the ankle of Nasaidi Alenzi. They do have a history of winning continental competitions. They were four-time Oceania champions. 
went out as such, winning the title in 2004. They never failed to reach the final of that competition. It's fair to say there wasn't too much competition in that tournament, Only was New there? Zealand. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubting it's proved to be a good move to, for Australia, and you wonder how long it'll be before New Zealand follow suit as well. Luciano will be keen for that not to happen. There is the challenge again. Watch as he falls on the ankle. There it is. I don't think he does it on purpose. Yet in Yeah, just qualification from the Oceana group always ends up in a playoff game, doesn't it? We wonder, really, the two federations don't just merge into one. It's Hussein, the AFC division has become really competitive now. Yedinak is back on. Katani, you felt, just held off making the 50-50 challenge. Ball is back with Hamid. Almost a really good pass from Parisi. Just trying to bend that ball forward. Katani. Ibrahim. The pressure from Luongo took no chances. And 90 seconds for Australia to try and get themselves a half time lead. There's no doubt if they go in level, Q8 will unquestionably be the far happier of the two teams. Although, look a little brighter now for Australia that they have leveled the game to the shock of the early concession. Franic. Good ball in for Franjic, and that is the lead for Australia. Luongo, the provider of the equaliser, scores the second himself. It is Australia 2, Q8-1, and the Socceroos will have that half-time lead. Always a threat when the ball goes into the box, Australia. Franjic down the right-hand side, all he does is just take it back onto his left foot here. Just delivers the ball, got three players. In at the far post, but what a good header it was from Luongo, the midfield player. Timed his run to perfection. He does really well to keep over the top of it and head it back across the goalkeeper. It's not good marking, but it's an excellent technical header. And in behind him, of course, was Tim Cahill. If they get crosses into the box with enough quality, Australia will score goals. You tend to think if Luongo not met that, then... Cahill was set to score his second of the game. And as it is, Massimo Luongo scores his first international goal, and what a time to do it. Free kick for Q8. And just time for the centre halves to go up here, centre backs for Q8. Need a good delivery into the box, put a bit of pressure on Australia. Good we have. Another twist. Aziz. Goes it in by Aziz. It's a decent delivery as well. Did the intervention in the end of Spiranovic. And still it's not away. They're appealing for handball there as well, Q8. They do look a threat from set pieces when they get... Oh, what a delivery that was from Aziz. Bent in. It's very good defending by Spiranovic in the end. He's a decent player, Aziz. He had a couple of years playing in the Czech Republic for Pribram. A year in Belgium as well at Muskrom. Before returning to Q8 to play for the, the dominant team in that country, Kadzia. Where so many of the national team are drawn from. Katani's header. The game plan worked for 32 minutes. 
for Q8. Could develop into a long second half. Manage with the throw. In truth, apart from the goal that they snatched from a corner, some pretty determined defending, they have looked a team largely out of their depth. Troisi. And that brings to an end what was potentially looking like a disastrous first half for the host nation, Australia, when Q8 were headed in front through the central defender, Hussein, just eight minutes in, but Mr. Reliable, Tim Cahill, popping up with his 37th international goal for Australia. And just as it looked as though Q8 would hold on to parity at half-time, Massimo Luongo Provider of the first, scored the second, 2-1, Australia leads. Sides making their way out then for the second half. The target for Q8, of course, will be to keep it as tight as possible, but unlike when they were level and a, and a goal up, they need to find a goal from somewhere, otherwise they will be under a great deal of pressure going into their second match against South Korea. After the disaster that was the, the Golf Cup for them at the end of last year, failing to reach the semi-finals for the first time since 2007. There's a very real prospect that Kuwait's Asian Cup could be over after the opening two games by the time they get a shot at making amends against Oman. So a big second half for both these teams. Australia looking for three points in the bag ahead of their second game against Oman. And Q8, well, they'd be absolutely delighted with a point. But given the golfing class between these two teams, it is difficult, Stuart, to make a case for Q8 in the second 45. Yeah, it's going to need a couple of moments of inspiration from them. You didn't see too much build-up play. You had that one good, uh, bit of good combination play down the left-hand side that resulted in the corner from which they scored. But apart from that, Aziz has been fairly isolated up front. They did prove in the qualifiers, though, with the 1-1 draw against Iran. They are capable of holding their own against Asia's best. That was the only match that Iran failed to win in the qualifying tournament. Australia haven't been in the best form themselves coming into this. They lost their last two internationals against Qatar and Japan. They've actually only won one of the last 11 matches, a 3-2 win against Saudi Arabia back in September, a match that was played in London. They lost eight of those 11 games, though, including the three at the World Cup. That was a tough challenge going in straight away. Sliding in, the captain. Nesaidi Alenzi on Tim Cahill. He's not slowing it in his own back, Tim Cahill. Strong challenge by Alenzi. Jedinak, Spiranovic. You would think it would be a question of how many in this second half for Australia. And nobody was banking on Q8 taking that early lead. That has to be a foul. It's taken down. And the yellow cards. Al Katani. And the yellow card is for Faisal. Upside in midfielder. Yeah, Al Katani came out to the ball. Faisal's running back. It's him that catches the on rushing Franic. Franic got the wrong side of him to start off with. Zaid, one of the lesser experienced players in this QAD squad. A handful of caps prior to this tournament, the 23 year olds. An early chance for Australia to 
They put a buffer between themselves and Q8. Tracy over this. The lead remains at one. You feel Q8 have half a chance, but should have become a bigger gap. It's difficult to see them getting back into it. Whipped in by Troisi. Just too high for Sainsbury. He's arriving at that back post. Very nearly went in at the back post as well. Just needed a little bit more bend on it. Starts to come round here. Two players at the far post. And it's football these days, Tracy. Zulta Varagam in Belgium. Struggling for regular first team appearances, though. Two goals in five matches so far this season in the Tulipa League. Summer signing from Melbourne Victory. What's tough watch, isn't it, for Melo? He hasn't had too much time. Certainly not. What's the Koglu? There's the manager, Nabil Malul. Tunisian. 52 years of age. Former coach of Tunisia and a former Tunisian international midfielder. Spent most of his career in his home country, but did actually have two years playing for Hanover in Germany between 89 and 91. by Ryan. Still not coming out and pressing the ball, Q8. Just going to play the same tactics and hopefully they can get a free kick, a set play in a good area. That is what they're relying on, isn't it? I mean, they, they haven't, like, opening up Australia at all in open play. And he's done a good job, although the results haven't been fantastic. When they went to the World Cup, they were very much considered the worst team at the World Cup. But they put in some good performances, both against Chile and against the Netherlands. Took over from the, the popular coach, Holger Oziek, in October 2013. It was Oziek's failure to bring through new talent and an over-reliance on the so-called golden generation that reached the last 16 of the 2006 World Cup that was seen as the main reason for Oziek's dismissal. Costa Coglu has certainly introduced some new fresh faces into the Australian lineup. Cahill bundled off the ball, though. Salet. Aziz was looking for that. Crowd unsympathetic again. Not really in Kuwait's best interest now to stay down for no reason. Yeah, there's. Certainly wasn't a foul. Okay, Hill was trying to shield the ball. There's the challenge. Oh, see his ankle just turns there as he goes to ground. A good gripper Hussein shirt, Kay Hill. Just see it twist there. Mm. Got a slight problem. Hussein, the goal scorer. Yes, and this will be a big problem if they lose him, Q8. Actually, given their over reliance on the defence. Just too shy of 50 caps. Well, as you were talking about before the game, there are one or two players that can come off the bench and make a difference. Well, Motua. Elsham Ardi, also a Good attacking player. I must feel he's on a bit of a hide into nothing here. Now, Bill Malul, absolutely no time at all to work with the team. Just that one match will be a creditable result. The 1 1 draw against Iraq. who proved that surprises do happen in the Asian Cup when they won the 2007 edition.
Ball just overhit by Theresi. Off the skiddy surface, that's they're now playing on with this rain coming down. Certainly freshened everything up. Only seven nations have been Asian champions. Australia hoping to increase that tally to eight. Knee in the back there for Sultan by the looks of things. One of those previous seven winners. Israel, of course, no longer eligible to play in the competition, having made the move to UEFA. I think that was a bit naughty from Flanich. It's a good jump from him, and then he just had a little flick out with his right boot. I think he knew what he was doing there. The cheap shot by the right back. This is free kick to Hussein. He's back on again. To the ball for too long, though. It's Troisi. Made a bit of a mess of that. Still limping slightly, Hussein. Unsurprisingly. I haven't seen that replay of him twisting his ankle. It's miscontrols all round now, isn't it? Al Hazri gifting Australia a throw. Behic will take it. I thought he carried that out for a second. It was a good run, though, by Cruz. Ebrahim with the clearance. Really, though, keeping QA pen back. Bear hitch with it. Yeah, he's struggling, you say. He's an experienced player. They won't want to lose him, but there comes a point, Stuart, when he's going to have to be taken off. Yeah, it's no good having a player limping around who can't run. Came on and lost the ball immediately. Behic. Saying gets it away. The header by Al Hajri. Aziz wins the throw. Busy little player, Aziz. A touch of quality as well. Haven't really seen enough, have we, from Al Maxid out on this right hand side? Talented player, there's been a lot of talk about him. He's really been able to get involved in the game in that five man midfield. Sainsbury. It's the easiest ball for Behic to deal with, but he's done really well to pick out Cruz. Sam hobbles away after that latest challenge. Trying to battle on and run through the paint. Behich beaten to that by Al McSeat. Spiranovic. Now Sainsbury. Troisi. Behic, Cruz, Jedinak, Cahill. That was a neat build-up from Australia, given away in the end by Cahill. Now they're going to try and win the ball back quickly. Kuwait going to have to play long to a lone striker. It's always going to be won back by Australia. Let's face it, given his height, Aziz is never going to win a ball like that against either Sainsbury or Spiranovic. But Kuwait were made to play that ball because Australia closed them down so quickly. It's the only option for the left back. Smiranovic. They're playing in Australia now. Matthew Smiranovic with Western Sydney Wanderers. The overlap here and it's out for a corner. Really good pace from the fullback, Flanich. Didn't look to, to, as though he was going to be favourite to win that ball there. He's been a real threat down the right hand side. And he's going to have to make way, Hussein. That is a big loss for Q8. Goal scorer 
is off. Emma Al Matouk is on to replace him. Badly enough, it could even be the end of his competition. Just three days to recover for the match against South Korea. Looks so. And the two has gone to right back. And now Hadri has gone into centre half. Behic. There is Al Hadri. Behic. Back by Al Ebrahim. Now McSeeds. Closing down again by Australia, and it's never too long before Q8 give possession up. Sainsbury. No the scoring yet. There's two goals, 11 minutes apart, turning a 1 0 deficit into a 2 1 lead for Australia. Challenge from the substitutes. Number two, but here's a chance for Cahill, and it's a great save by Hamid. Glorious chance to increase the lead for Australia. And then his second of the night, Tim Cahill. Danger not over yet, though. Cruz. Still, it's not away. As Troisi tried to burst through. Well, Cahill did most things right there. It was good pressure. By Australia winning the ball back in the opposition's box. He didn't quite get it in the corner, did he, Cahill? But a good save by Hamid. Katani. Luongo. Header out by Alenzi. Coming back as quickly as it's being cleared, though, for Q8. Behic. Now Maxides. Australia utterly dominating now. Spiranovic. Seems a question of time before the third goal arrives for Australia. Well, apart from that Cahill chance, in truth, despite their dominance territorially, still not creating that much. Chance now, maybe. Here's Cruz. Yedinak. Cruz again into Luongo. The opening here, oh, that is so unlucky. Well, that's even closer than Cahill came to extending the lead for Australia. Well, they're totally dominant now, Australia. Lecky coming back onto his left foot, brilliant strike. Hit with power, also trying to bend it round the goalkeeper. Well, I thought Leckie was their best player at the World Cup, or their most dominant player at the World Cup. Hasn't been involved too much today, but that's what he can do. He's in the German second division, for the league leaders, Ingolstadt. His ball in again to Cruz, who's gone down, penalty. Well, there's been a few risky challenges gone in in that penalty area from Q80 players, particularly in the first half. And this one was right in front of Rashvan Ermatov, the Uzbek referee. And he had no hesitation whatsoever in pointing to the spot. Well, he's been a live wire. Cruz just picking up the ball here, takes it past that touch. And it's the recovering defender, Sultan, that brings him down. He knew as soon as he touched him, it was going to be a penalty. And I think the referee's done a good job again. You can see why he's... So highly regarded. Now, Yedinak is a good spot taker. Can he prove it here? Five goals this season. Six in the international jersey of Australia. Mille Yedinak, Socceroos captain, increases the lead to 3-1 and surely puts the outcome of this match 
beyond any doubt. The host nation up and running, and they are going to be heading surely into their second game against Oman in Sydney with three points in the bag. Well, he made it look simple. Stuttering runner. I think he waited for the goalkeeper to go one way and then just passed it into the other side. Here's that stuttering runner looking at the goalkeeper. Had the goalkeeper chosen the right way. Does he have a look at the goalkeeper? No, he doesn't. Had the goalkeeper chosen the right way, it would have been an easy save because it wasn't hit with great power. It wasn't hit into the corner. Two goals at the 2011 Asian Cup. Goals against South Korea and Bahrain. Now he has one against Q8 to add to that list. 61st minute penalty, Australia 3, Q8 1. Q8 are going to make a change here. It's Yusuf Nasser to come on, who is a forward with a good scoring record, 32 goals in 55 internationals. Three goals in the qualifying tournament for Yusuf. Scored in the 3-1 wins against Thailand and the 1-1 draw away in Lebanon. But it's your man, Aziz, that's been brought off. The player who was playing through the middle. So it's just a straight swap, really. <laughs> Back here by Al Seeds. And here is Yusuf forcing the save from Ryan. Well, what an introduction that almost was for Yusuf Nasser. Well, it all came about because they pressed the ball higher up the field, won it back. Lovely reverse ball through to Youssef. It's all getting a bit feisty now, some strong tackles going in. The referee letting one or two challenges go. It's been a terrific opening game. Sometimes they can be rather dour and tight affairs. Opening games to major tournaments, but it's far from it. As much as Q8 would have liked that. Australia have just simply been too good for them. Now Tim Cahill with the points in the bag. He's been taken out of the firing line, 35 years of age now. And he is replaced by Tommy Urich, 23-year-old from Western Sydney Wanderers, who scored the winner in the Asian Champions League final against Al Hilal is on to get his first taste of the major international tournaments and win just his sixth cap. Katani. Al McSeed. Good work from Al McSeed. Played away by Spiranovic. Hear the crowd singing their appreciation of Tim Cahill. Quite rightly so as well. What a servant he's been to the Socceroos. Twice FA Cup finalist, of course, with Millwall and Everton. Well, he's certainly come a long way since I was watching him and Lucas Neal. Likes of Stephen Reid playing in that Millwall side that got into the championship. wasn't the most technically gifted certainly had a great spring and determination made the most of his talent or he's still making the most of his talent now Katani now Faisal <laughs> actually on the ball Q8 they've got some players of technical quality likes of Almond and Yusuf and Faisal just been hustled out of it far too easily by Australia's work rate. Franjic. Could be a very 
difficult three games for this Q80 side. Get it, Nick. Back by Salet. Sultan. My earliest memories of a World Cup was the Q80 team sitting down in protest and the head of the Q80 FA coming down and complaining about a goal that they conceded against France because there was a, a whistle in the crowd. A complaint that was bizarrely upheld and the goal ruled out. Q8 eventually lost the game anyway to France. It's a Michel Platini effort. It was. It was an extraordinary moment in the annals of World Cup history. Here's a chance now for Australia, though. Cruz going through the middle, sliding challenge by Almatug was a good one this time. The yeah, Almatug did well to get back. They just delayed the pass through to Cruz. That's what a fullback should do, get round on the cover. He saw the danger. And just about got the slide challenge in. And that will be a goal kick. Yeah, what a challenge that is from the fullback. See the ball, see it's getting away from Cruz. Just slides in with the outside of his right boot. Brilliant from the fullback. He's had a really lively game. Bobby Cruz, relatively fresh for this tournament because of the lack of game time at Leverkusen. It's always the question. Fresh or rusty? <laughs> Depends if he plays well or not. If he plays well, he's fresh. If he has a poor performance, he's rusty. This Australian team come from wide and varied backgrounds. Many of the players playing their trade at European clubs. Q8 don't have that. Most of the squad, as I was saying at the start, do play in Q8. There was an attempt from the Q80 businessman Fawaz Al Hasawi, the owner and chairman of Nottingham Forest, to get a couple of players into the city ground. Work permit issues, though, prevented that. Uh, Khaled Al Rashidi, one of the substitute goalkeepers, did have one appearance at Nottingham Forest. His Saleh. Al McSeed. Matug is outside him. And that's a corner. Yeah, good switch of play. An overload down the right hand side. Didn't make the most of it. Substitute. Al Matug. We talked in the first half about them being quite dangerous at set plays. Australia man marking with player in the near post zone and a player on the six yard box who should attack everything score with that only corner of the first half Q8 had a doubt with though Played away by Spiranovic and two to Al McSeeds little ball into Saleh and the first time shot is off the crossbar from Al Ibrahim I think Ryan may have got a touch on that, but that's really unlucky. And Q8 was so nearly back in the game. You said he may have got a touch. I think that was a great save. That was going right into the top corner. What a good strike. I think Ryan just gets his right hand to it. We'll see it again in a moment. Big moment in the game. Faisal. It's better though from Q8 away from Spiranovic. Too long in this game that Australian defence has had nothing to think about. What a shot that would have been to the system had that nestled into the net from El Ebrahim. Credit Ryan, who's had very little to do. So produce a save like that. Goal kick. Chance maybe to see that strike again from El Ebrahim. Here it is. That's great first touch. Hits right through the back of the ball and there's the save with the Bottom hand, his right hand. That was going in. Terrific goalkeeping. It was good attacking play as well to get the first touch down. He improvised with a shot. Just hitting straight through the ball. 
Nathan Burns on for Robbie Cruz. Well, many people thought that Burns might start. He's been in it really good form in the A-League so far this season. Four years at Ike Athens in Greece. She's just his eighth cap, though, for Australia, the 26-year-olds. Former Greek Cup winner. Played for Australia at pretty much every level from under 17 upwards. Tani seems to be struggling as well for Kuwait. Yeah. Ryan following in the footsteps of Mark Schwarzer. Pretty big gloves to fill. Another of the 2006 golden generation, so highly thought of. Just 22 though, Matt Ryan. Choice at the World Cup is Behech. Troisi. Why is his trade abroad? There's Matt Ryan in Belgium with Brugge. Voted the Belgian League goalkeeper of the year last season. The stock is certainly rising. So it would have gone a long way towards helping that as well. It's a superb piece of goalkeeping. Very Juric. nearly stayed in play, didn't it? There. It's a determined run from Juric as well to try and keep it in. Well, it's made it a much more comfortable ending to the game for Australia, that save from Matt Ryan, than it would have been at 3 2. Another change for Kuwait. Player we all expected to start the game. Bada Al Mutawa is coming on for his 147th international cap. He scored 47 international goals for Q8. Former Asian Player of the Year, runner up in 2006 and third in 2010. He's won seven Q80 league titles. Obviously, at the moment, not a favourite with Malou, the new coach. Usually plays in the number 10 role. Can drift out wide. I have to reshuffle the side slightly with Al Katani coming off. Did score four years ago in Doha in the 2 1 defeat to Uzbekistan. He is the fans' favourite in Q8. Now he's finally off. Probably too late to make a difference. Behic. Cross in, it's a good header! It's off the bar again. Well, Burns really unlucky. Looping header, and Hamid was well beaten. And for the third time in this game, the crossbar has been struck. Behic. Another chance to cross. Delivers again, but it's a poor one this time. Well, you won't see a much better header than this from Burns. Ball was bent in towards him. It's the diving header. Gets across the front of the centre half. Almost loops over the goalkeeper. There's the cross. Lots of pace in it, so he just needs to glide it goalwards. Or glance it goalwards. He certainly does that. By Spiranovic. Part of that Western Sydney Wanderers Asian Champions League win last year. Last experienced player who was spell with Nuremberg in Germany four years playing with the Rauer Reds. Playing regularly when we covered the J League on this channel. Well, it's good that an Australian side have gone on to win that. Asian Champions League. Showing, showing that the A-League is coming a long way forward. Corner for Q8. Chance maybe to make an awkward ending to this game. Al McSeed's ball in. Burns. 
Strong challenge. Lecky has it. Shot by Al McSeed. Now Salet. Lost out to Troisi. Here's Lecky. Hasri just getting a foot in the way though, but Australia have it back in search of this fourth goal. Franic. Sultan with the clearance. Juric, El Ebrahim, denied by that terrific save by Ryan. Matug, in behind, here's a chance from the tower, and a second chance, or squares it this time. And Australia get it away. And there's a couple of times now that Australia have been more or less opened up by Kuwait. And on the tower, we feel he perhaps could have done better, but here's Lecky. Skips away from Al Hadri. Lecky. Oh, it's played behind Juric. Such an open game. Well, why he wasn't playing from the start, I'll never know. And the tower. His run was brilliant to stay on side. He didn't really have too many other options other than shoot for goal. He did everything right, but it was another good save from Matt Ryan. Made in by Behic. Saleh wanted too much time. That's one thing Q8 haven't had when being in possession of the ball this evening. Troisi. Another tower and Yusuf. Dangers since coming on for Q8. There was more than one or two raised eyebrows when Ada Umatau wasn't named in the starting 11. That was Luongo. That's quite a second half actually from Massimo Luongo. Mm. There's another good save. Doesn't have a look up, he just smashes it up. And he tries to beat the goalkeeper for pace, but he's well positioned. And the next one, he tries just to roll it into the front player to sweep it in. And a good challenge came in from Franic. Instantly added a bit of quality. But the run, you saw the last bit of it there, but I was watching his run right from there. He started on the other side of the field and he stayed on side, he stayed on side. He picked out his run perfectly. Faisal, Salet, Zelma Tug, Renzi, Image clears. Well, they've been far from infallible in this game. Australia for games to come. Neman, remember, who beat Q8 5 0 in the Golf Cup. One of the outsiders, but could cause a few surprises. And South Korea will be a really tough game. Australia will be hoping it's job done by the time they face the Koreans. They have been opened up a, a couple of times by Q8 in this second half. Of course, the concession of that goal early on from the corner. They're going to have to be much tighter when they. Take on the likes of an Iran or a Japan or even a Korea. You're absolutely right. Oceano just getting himself ready over on that far side. You talk about the new generation of Socceroo players, but he's very much one of the old guard coming on. Bresciano, 34 year old, playing in Qatar these days for Al Garafa. Coming 12 years in Syria. His 82nd cap. Take part in his third Asian Cup. Alenzi. Time running out for Q8 if they are to snatch an unlikely point. Up towards Almutawa. 
Al Yusuf. And Mutawa. The way. Australia again, only as far though as Almatug. It's a free kick now for Q8. Oh, they're wanting a yellow card. Teresi was quick to get the tackle in on Almatug. Now a chance. Can they deliver a good ball into the box? Won't bring Bresciano on while they're defending a set play. Seat. Set to deliver. Sultan getting involved with Yedinak. Yeah, next still wants to have a little go. Hold that line on the edge of the area, heading yeah, desperately. Wow. The ball in though. Well, he actually got back and defended it, but I thought his positional play was all wrong there, Yedinak. Again for Q8, headed away by Sainsbury. Free kick for Australia and the danger over for the time being. They can make that third change. So, Luongo makes way, much quieter second half than he had in the first. Creator of Tim Cahill's goal and scorer of the second himself. But a good performance in the Swindon Town midfielder, replaced by Mark Bresciano. Listen to the reaction for the 34-year-old former player with Empoli, Palmer, Palermo and Lazio. Mike Cahill taking part in his ninth major international tournament. Like a lot of players that play in Syria in some of the lesser sides, they do go around the places. Opening here maybe now for Juric, straight at the goalkeeper though. Comfortable save for Hamid and then Troisi with the follow-up. Straight at the Q80 goalkeeper. He launches it long. Played by Lecky. The cross, and it must be four. What a wonderful save by Hamid. Bresciano. Now Franic. Bresciano again. And Hamid gathers this time. Well, you wonder how much he knew about it. It was saved with his feet. It was a lovely ball in by Lecky. Well, that's what Lecky is all about. Whenever I've seen him play, he's been a good run with the ball. I've been a bit disappointed with him tonight. He can run past people with the ball. He's a good crosser. That one with the outside of his right boot into the space. Really should have been 4-1. Tower, the touch off. Salet. Strong header from Al Hajri. Troisi. He's got himself in Syria. Troisi with Atalanta and Bergamo before they score score and Enchlerbaligi in Turkey. Well, it's got off to just the kind of start they were hoping for Australia. Five minutes away plus stoppages from. Three points in the bag ahead of the next game. And Sydney against Oman. From Kuwait, the tough start continues against South Korea. Given the quality of their side, could prove to be an even harder test than playing the host. Is Yusuf. Taking on Sainsbury. The challenge should be a corner. Just about done enough, Sainsbury. They might be beaten for pace. Here's the save. Look at this ball from Lecky. Outside of the right boot, into the space. And there was the golden opportunity. Good save with his trailing foot. That's been wonderful viewing, hasn't it? Let's hope the rest of the Asian Cup lives up to this quality. Oh, it's a good quality pitch. Good conditions, had a bit of rain as well. Just to quicken the pitch up. 
good refereeing as well. He's allowed the play to continue. The tower. Ultimately coming to nothing, though. Do you think QA could have got a bit more out of this if they'd been a bit more adventurous from the off? They may have done, but they may also have left themselves a little bit open at the back. But they have created chances. Almost when the game's beyond them. Just think it was a very negative approach that he took right from the start. Team selection. Here's Juric. Fist across. Well done, Hamid. He's got enough on it. You're absolutely right. It's one thing to set up defensively, isn't it? But it's another thing to start leaving your better players out, which Almu Tower clearly is. Yeah, the so game was gone by the time he was on. And only he will know why he left him out. Here he is again. To the run of Yusuf. Lecky. Tracy. Jedinak, whose penalty pretty much wrapped up the points just after the hour mark. After Cruz was fouled. Had a fairly easy game, hasn't he? Jedinak just sitting in front of his two centre halves, switching the play. Never really been put under immense pressure. Defensively, he any raking passes, he's just done everything simply and comfortably. Play behind Burns. That's in the net, but the whistle had already gone. Space on the ball. Sally. Now McSeeds. Tracy. Challenge from Al Ebrahim. Now McSeeds. Spread out to Alma Tower. By Franich. Matawa, straight at Ryan. Once again, good play from him. Coming inside, played it into the front plan, supported. Good shot on the run. Juric. Three minutes to be added on. I think Angie Postacoglu will be fairly pleased with his side's second half display. Be worried that does. Brugger may have their work cut out, keeping hold of him, just 22. He was an A-League winner at Central Coast Mariners in 2013 before the move to Belgium. They've replaced Mark Schwarzer with a, another fine goalkeeper. French. Bresciano. Yedinak. Lecky. Leading them a merry dance again, Lecky. It's a terrific play. Oh, and it's in. Troisi smashes home the fourth goal for Australia and rounds off what has been a wonderful opening game for the Socceroos. James Troisi. Melbourne delight. It is Australia 4, Q81. Well, that was all about Lecky to start with, running with the ball. So he just drops his shoulder, a couple of little step-overs. Tries to shot himself, and when the ball falls free, look how quickly Therese is onto it. Goalkeeper wouldn't have seen it till 
Very, very late. He just hits it with power. But Therese has been excellent in midfield for Australia. And I think that scoreline of 4-1 just to sum, sums up the difference between the two sides. But well played, Matthew Leckie to start off with. Yeah, he looks really lively, doesn't he? Terrific runner with the ball. Tracy's second international goal. Commanding opening night victory for the host nation. Here's Yusuf. After a shot lead for Q8 inside the first 10 minutes, the match has pretty much gone how we all expected. Here's Troisi. Socceroos take their first step on the road, perhaps to Sydney, on January the 31st, where the final of the 2015 Asian Cup will be played. Much sterner tests will lie between now and then if Australia are to become the AFC's finest. They were given an early shock here through Hussein's goal after eight minutes for Q8, but they responded well. Cahill and Luongo had Australia ahead by half-time. Yet in act penalty and a late goal by James Troisi, rounding off what, as expected in the end, was a comfortable win for Australia. Q8 did OK in patches, had a few chances. El Ebrahim hit the bar. Al Mutawa was lively when he came off the bench, which posed the question, why didn't their finest player start in the first place? Work to do for Q8 then. It's South Korea for them next. It doesn't get any easier. But Australia play Omar with three points firmly in the bag. So no surprises, Stuart. And in the end, Australia couldn't have expected much more from the opening game. No, of course, it started off badly for them. 